their land with the destruction of the first temple by Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians, find themselves exiled to Persia, Iraq, Iran, Babylon, and Persia. Uh, Cyrus, the Persian emperor in around the 6th century BCE, makes a proclamation. It is written on this cylinder. This is not the actual Cyrus cylinder. This is a replica. But on the cylinder is written permission granted to people who have been exiled to return to their native land to rebuild their sacred places. The Jewish people return to the land of Israel and start to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. Unfortunately, Achashverosh, Chashiarsh in Persian, Xerxes in Greek, Achashverosh in Hebrew, decides to stop this building of the temple. And he actually celebrates the fact that the Jewish people are in exile and in his belief will never return to the land of Israel. The celebration, we are told in the scroll of Esther, involves Kale, clay zahav, gold drinking vessel. This is a Persian write on a uh, gold drinking vessel, uh, a replica. This is a replica of one found in the British Museum, holds about half a litre to a litre of wine. And uh, the Jewish people and the people in Shushan in Persia, Susa, as it's called today, come to this feast to celebrate and to drink and to celebrate really the demise of the Jewish people and the advent of what Ahasuerus felt was his eternal dynasty. Of course, God had other plans. And then we have the story of Scroll of Esther and we have Haman arising. Haman, an evil anti-Semite, wants to destroy the Jewish people. He has a lottery. This is a poor. It is actually a replica from the Yale University Museum. It's a poor, a lottery from Persia from around the time of Purim um, and cuneiform inscriptions on the side, Haman throws the lottery to determine the month in which he will destroy the Jewish people. It turns out to be the month of Adar, which he is quite happy about because that's when Moses died. Unknown to Haman is that's when Moses was also born. His life was a complete cycle. He fulfilled his destiny on this planet. And so death was not an end. Death was a beginning. Birth was a beginning. And so the Jewish people, in the same way, uh, saved by the heroism of Esther, the wisdom of Mordechai, and the hidden hand of God. And we celebrate that by reading the scroll of Esther, written on parchment as it has been written for thousands of years in the writing, beautiful writing known as Ketav Asherit, Assyrian script or wealthy script or, reg or certified script. And the story of the scroll of Esther, the salvation of the Jewish people. So we start with an artifact of Cyrus allowing the Jews to come back. We continue with the feast of Ahasuerus, the Persian drinking vessels. We continue with the lottery of Haman and finally the salvation of the Jewish people written in the scroll of Esther, read by the Jewish people for thousands of years at night and in the day to proclaim the miracle which God did for us and which continues to do for us to save the Jewish people, to sustain the Jewish people, to give us success and health and blessing, even in the midst of the greatest darkness. The fact that the Jewish people are around today, the fact that we are not only surviving but thriving, the fact that we have returned to the land of Israel, the fact that we have an amazing economy, an amazing culture, amazing amount of Torah learning in the land of Israel, all these hidden hand of God, sometimes not so hidden, sometimes fairly obvious, and that's a celebration that we'll be celebrating very, very soon, the next couple of days in the celebration of Purim. And the last artifact, of course, needs no explanation. It is the Purim duck. And a happy Purim to you from myself and from the Purim duck.